but for now what we need to know is that m and n are not necessarily a and b respectively so what exactly are m and n so these are known as the order of reaction and as you can see over here the order of the reaction is the power to which the concentration of the reactant is raised in the rate equation so the concentration of a is raised to the power of m and the concentration of b is raised to the power of n so the order of the reaction with respect to a is m and the order of reaction with respect to b is n and the overall order of the reaction is m plus n this is the overall order of the reaction so and now you know the definition of order this is very important because uh, they often ask you to write these definitions so now we can move further so calculating the rate constant using the initial rate method so the rate constant which is k which i told you was k in the last uh, slide so how can we calculate it now as you can see the y axis is the concentration of a versus uh, uh, a is the concentration of a and the x axis is the time so the gradient of this graph will be delta a over delta t this will be the gradient at any point so when we draw tangent at any point and calculate delta a over delta t that will give us the rate because as i told you rate is the change occurring per unit time so delta a over delta t which is the gradient at any point when you draw a tangent at any point and calculate this gradient it will be the rate at that point at that particular instant of the reaction so we know that rate is equal to rate is equal to k times the concentration of a to the power of m let's ignore b for now because we know that uh, b is not shown over here so b is kept constant the concentration of b is kept constant and we measure the concentration of a with time so we know this is the relation between k and uh, rate uh, between rate k and a sorry so k is equal to rate over the concentration of a to the power of m so uh, we, when we calculate rate at a particular point which is delta a over delta t then we can divide that with uh, the concentration at that point so for example i am calculating the rate over here the point i have marked so first i'll draw a tangent over here so I, this is not an accurate tangent let me try to make something more accurate than this so the tangent will be i think so i it's really difficult to make a tangent on presentation so uh okay i know how i think i know i figured it out yeah so the tangent will be something no okay so it's very difficult to make a tangent uh, in on the presentation right now but for example you are taking a tangent over here okay so you draw a tangent over here and you calculate the gradient of the tangent at this point and it will be the rate at this point the gradient of the tangent at this point will be the rate at this point and then from the y axis you can see the concentration of a at this point so you know the concentration of a and you know the rate so you divide it by so you use this equation to calculate k however what happens is that when a reaction is proceeding we will not have the value of the concentration in most cases we will not have the value of concentration in between the reaction because obviously we have an initial uh, the initial concentration and it's very it's like we it's very difficult to measure the concentration of a because uh, maybe a is not ionic so we cannot use a conduct a, a, a meter that uh, uses conductivity for example so it's very difficult to measure the concentration of a in between the reaction so it's really difficult to calculate the value of k from between so we use something called the initial rate method and in that so this graph is actually incomplete we start from uh, 0.20 so this is the complete graph we start from here now before carrying out a reaction we have measured the concentration of a because that is possible so 
we know that it is 0.20 when we have started the reaction so we will make a tangent over here at the starting point we make a tangent at the start